Well, I was visiting Bangladesh as part of my journey around the Tropic of Cancer, the northern border of Earth's tropical region for a TV series, a BBC TV series of the same name. And the idea with the journey is that I basically follow this imaginary line around the planet and I see how what life is, how people are living um, along this imaginary line. So that was how I turned up in Bangladesh and travelled across the country um, to the capital, Dhaka. So Tanjil guided me through the slum area to an area where there were some glass factories. I was introduced in this factory to a 10-year-old boy called Jahangir, who was a tiny slip of a lad who works in the, the glass factory in very difficult conditions for a full shift every day, earning around about 30 pence for his work. It's very tough work, very difficult work, and a little bit dangerous as well. And, of course, while he's working, he's not getting, getting an education. He's not getting the normal things that children take for granted in the rest of the world. So Jahangir showed me where he worked, next to a giant boiling furnace. And then he took me around the side of the factory to show me where he sleeps. And he lives there with his... He lives inside the factory grounds with his mother and his tiny little sister as well. And I asked him at one point why he'd come to, why he'd had to come the, to the factory to work. And he said, no, very simply, because of hunger. It was a very simple childlike response to the question, but it was so telling that I had to bite my tongue to stop myself from crying. And Jahangir doesn't have the chance to go to school. He doesn't live in very good conditions. He doesn't have easy access to fresh water. He's basically denied the sort of rights that children in Europe and children in Britain particularly completely take for granted and that parents expect their children to have in, in the UK. We all expect that our kids will have a right to education, um, a right to basic health care, a right to clean water, to toilets, to sanitation. And Jahangir well, he has none of this. He works in sweltering conditions in a glass factory. It's actually quite dangerous as well in the factory because you've got a lot of hot pipes, um, a lot of hot coals, hot glass around. And we saw other um, small boys there inside the factory who'd suffered quite bad burns from accidentally touching um, or, being, or brushing against some of the hot pipes. So it's not a situation you want to see a child working in. It's not where kids should be. It's not an environment in which children should be living in. After I'd seen uh, where Jahangir was working, he took me to a UNICEF centre. We walked through the crowded streets of the slum to get to the UNICEF centre. And walk inside, there are dozens and dozens of young lads there, aged from about 8 to 16, I think, um, scores of them, waiting for a meal that UNICEF provides for them. They turn up at this centre for a meal, um, for a wash and a clean up, for education, for play as well. One of the most crucial aspects of what this UNICEF centre offers is really a chance for these working boys to be children, to enjoy life as a child, which is something that has been denied to them and is one of the most fundamental uh, children's rights of all the chance to be a kid the chance to be a youngster a child and play like a child so these boys would have a shower when they got there um, and then they would all sit down together and they would get a nutritious meal that they would eat together in quite a family environment it was one of the most uplifting um, moments of my entire journey around the Tropic of Cancer seeing these lads enjoying themselves together um, having had a wash, Jahangir emerged having had his wash, completely different boy to the scruffy, dirty little urchin who'd gone into the centre in the first place. UNICEF runs a, an education aspect to the centre, which is designed crucially to give these boys, give these children, um, some of the basic skills that will help to break the cycle of poverty um, and lift them out of life as a, as a working child. It should, in generations to come, transform their families and give them a chance to get a better job in the future. So while I was travelling through um, Bangladesh and seeing all these children labouring and working away, the obvious thing I'm thinking is that 
these factories should be closed down. These children shouldn't be working. They should have a right to a childhood. But what I realised is that it's not as straightforward as that. Several UNICEF officials explained to me that as much as they would like to stop all these children from working immediately and put them all into um, safe, clean schools where they get a decent education, at the moment there isn't the money to do that. UNICEF doesn't have enough funding, which is where the donors come in of course, but if children were stopped from working at the moment in Bangladesh immediately, then they wouldn't be earning the money that they need to provide food to put in their own bellies and to feed their own families. Children would literally starve. Without the education, these, ch these children will be stuck for generation after generation in the same cycle of poverty that traps young children into a situation where they have to work. But UNICEF, um, as I saw, is offering an alternative and it's one I can wholeheartedly support and, and hope that other people will as well.